GMC Sierra tweet of the night goes to the PGA Tour and Stuart Sink, who is repping, you can see, the new Kevin Durant uniform of the Phoenix Suns. So Kevin Durant's a guy who I thought would bring something more to Brooklyn. That's not happened. Kyrie Irving has gone on his separate way. Um, but I also look at this and say to myself, when you put a guy like Durant, when he had success, he had it in Golden State. Now, here we go talking too much about the NBA. I already got one tweet saying, why are you talking about the oh, NBA? Oh, who cares? I don't care. Who but, cares about the tweeters? It's your show, Pomp. You're a star. Right. You're a legend. Yeah. You should do what you well, want. The point do is, what you're passionate about. <laughs> The point is, Durant, when he had success, had Steph Curry, had Draymond Green, had Klay Thompson. He's going to a very similar situation, right? The frontline guys on that team are very good. Devin Booker's finally back healthy. So I believe this is going to result in a championship for him. Steve Banco, I'm not doing this just because I want to be your friend. Uh, he, as you know, he's a big Suns fan, for those of you who follow him on Twitter, at Steve Banco. But I, if they don't win... Uh, to your point earlier, they're going to have some explaining to do to their fan base because now all of a sudden they're giving away their entire future, I think. Yeah, you know what? Hold on, Bob. This is going to be a first here. I didn't do this on purpose. I didn't know we were going to talk so much Phoenix Suns, but this is the shoot today. <laughs> Purple and orange. Yeah. It was meant to be. Meant to it was be. Destiny. Championship, that, baby. <laughs> yeah, that was the good leg, by the way. I didn't pull that off the bad leg. That would have been very difficult for me to do. Um, they will, though. I, I mean, that is the downside. You give up so much for a guy who's in his 30s who you aren't going to have for, like, this great long period of time, then you absolutely are rolling the dice that if it doesn't work out, because Aiton's going to be gone. He doesn't want to be there anymore. It's pretty obvious. If it doesn't work out for them this year and they don't win it, then you go, okay, now what? Like, it's not like Chris Paul's getting any younger either. Right? This is an all-in move by a new owner out there who wants to make a splash and it had better pay off because if it doesn't, the repercussions are going to reverberate for that franchise for a pretty long time. Which leads us into the Penguins who find themselves in sort of a similar situation with all their high-end talent. What do they do at the trade deadline? We've talked about this before, but now we see Tarasenko going to New York. They're certainly all in on this. The Islanders have made a play. They're right behind the Penguins. The Buffalo Sabres are younger and I think faster and closing the gap what do the Penguins do? And if Ron Hextall does nothing and they don't make the playoffs, then what? Well, that's a dereliction of duty if, they do, if he does nothing and they don't make the playoffs. But what are we doing here, like, Ron, about a first-round pick being you're, you're taking it off the table? You're not going to move your first-round pick. Excuse me? What, do you, what is your plan here? Because that first-round pick should be open for business for the Penguins. I, I briefly thought, oh, yeah, maybe they should try to hold on. Who cares? Once the Crosby, Malkin, Latang era is over, I'm sorry, barring some sort of weird miracle, they are going to be in a massive rebuild that's going to suck the life out of that building. They should be trying to strike while the iron is as hot as it's ever going to be, and it's not that hot right now, but that first-round pick should absolutely be something that's on the block. Ron Hextall needs to make a move. Like, they're not getting any younger. Getting into the playoffs and hoping they get hot this year might be their last best chance at a cup. Mm -hmm. The idea that you're going to say, whoa now, whoa, a first-round pick, we can't go that far. Sorry, who are you? These are the Pittsburgh Penguins. First-round picks are candy. They chuck them out there all the time. Just go for it. Make some sort of move. Get some depth. Get some quality. And give yourselves one last best puncher's chance. Well said. Let's go out to Carl, who joins us tonight on line one from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Hey, Carl. Carl. Yes, I'm here. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I'm calling. Uh, I wanted to know what you think about the uh, Steelers and the uh, Penguins hanging on to their coaches. Are they going to get rid of them if they don't start winning? <laughs> uh, out of the blue comes that question. Mike Sullivan's signed. He's going to be here. I don't think they have any thoughts of doing anything. If you heard Ron Hextall the other day, Chris, he pretty much said that. You know, people were talking about tuning him out. You hear that a lot. He said, no, this is a, one of the best coaches in the game. They signed him to a long-term deal, and I expect Mike Tomlin's going to get an extension. As controversial as that will be around here, um, so no, that's not going to happen anytime soon. We could waste our time talking about it, but it's not going to happen. Just in honor of Billy Madison, I got to give Carl a <clears> – <throat> Carl, good to see you. Anyway, <laughs> uh, that's for uh, the Billy Madison, Adam. Adam Sandler was in town last night. I'm one night late on this one. Uh, anyway, I, 
Sullivan, his problem now is his best players are in their mid-30s and a team was built for him to coach that just does not have the kind of depth to roll lines and win games with regularity. I don't think they've tuned him out. I do think he's unique among Penguins coaches in that way. They tuned Dan Bilesma out. They never tuned into Mike Johnston. They clearly buy what Sullivan's selling. They just this is this is that tough part for every dynastic franchise, right? Every every great run of a team, Bob. People keep saying, well, what are the answers? Here's the real truth. There are just a lot of other teams that are better than the Penguins now because this is cyclical. They're younger, they're faster, they're better. I don't think they could touch the Hurricanes in a series at the present time. As far as Mike Tomlin goes, I will th- I'll do a 180 from my Sullivan answer there. Just because the Steelers always do things a certain way, in this case, give coaches new contract extensions when they have two years left on the current deal, doesn't mean you have to keep doing them that way in perpetuity. There's nothing wrong with You're not saying, Mike, you're a bad coach. You're not saying, oh, Mike, we're going to fire you. If you just say, hey, Mike, we're going to wait until after this coming season and revisit this. It's not saying you're going to be out the door, but we're just going to change what we do a little bit. There's nothing wrong with that that I could see. No, I agree with that. Uh, two years is two years. It's still a long time. But judging by what I hear, that that is something forthcoming. By the way, the M- NFL MVP was just announced it's Patrick Mahomes. The coach of the year was Brian Dable. Uh, you know, I understand Brian Dable, but I wouldn't have given it to him. Chris, I don't know what you thought. I've thought all along it should have been Kyle Shanahan. I thought he got, um, you know, completely, what's the word? Uh, because of the injury situation that he had to deal with at his quarterback position, the most important position on the field. And he, had, he was down to Josh Johnson. Uh, so there's not much you can do in that uh, situation. But as far as the regular season, I thought he was the coach of the year. I think that this season was the ultimate validation of how great Kyle Shanahan's offense is. I've seen like Brock Purdy in these redraft articles going number one or number four. Come on. I like Brock Purdy. I liked watching him play. Let's get real, though. This was more Kyle Shanahan's offense helping Brock Purdy walk right into the NFL and excel because it's a really good offense. Purdy's really good. Shanahan's offense is great. I think they got it right, though, Bob. I think Dable would have gotten – I know Dable would have gotten my vote. He took over a team mostly bereft of talent and made them five wins better. Uh, I think he did nothing less than a spectacular job with that team and with Daniel Jones, who to that point in his career had been a complete bust. I think it was a deserving win for Dable. Getting back real quick before we go to break about the Penguins, one thing they have to start doing is – um, stop believing that they can keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. You know, their, their game, uh, even though Mike Sullivan still thinks they can play their game, which is to get to the attack zone, work it deep, try to outskate teams, they just can't do that. They have to reinvent themselves in terms of how they play, specifically, Chris, with a lead. It seems like every time they score, they give it up. They give up early. You know, the game the other night, for example, Colorado, they should have been blown out. You can tell me all you want about Casey DeSmith. You don't like him. A lot of people have you know, tweeted us and said that. In that particular game, he was the reason they were allowed to come back and get two points. Yeah, they got run over for most of that game for about 50 out of 60 minutes, and then they found themselves late, and obviously it was enough to end up getting two points because they still have, you know, it's the old power in a boxer. It's the last thing to go. They can still do that to teams. But you're right. I mean, the problem is it's hardwired into their DNA. Hey, we've got Crosby. We've got Malkin. We've got Latang. We're going to play Harlem Globetrotters on ice and have fun and put on a show out here, but they got to start buckling down. Again, though, the problem, if they do that or try to do that, where's the depth? Where are the quality bottom six forwards to allow you to do that? Because you have to have guys that are good, that are energetic. What was the key to some of those runs in 15-16 and then 16-17? Young guys coming up from AHL, giving them a shot in the arm, giving them energy, and giving them quality bottom six minutes. Where is that coming from on this team right now? Well, it could come from Drew O'Connor if he was given more of a leash. It could come from Jonathan Gruden, who was given more of a leash, more ice time. It seems like when they come up, Mike Sullivan prefers to go to the veterans. And he's done that not just with those two guys, with other guys in the past three years. you got to give some guys a chance at some point and say, I need an injection of life. I'm going to let him play. And he hasn't done that. We're due for a break, Chris. We'll come back and talk about that and more as we continue right here. This is the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call, Pittsburgh CW and 93.7 The Fan.